What's up, tubers? This is Taco Tones, and today we are going to talk some E3. So last week I had the opportunity uh, to go to E3 in downtown Los Angeles and get a chance to play all sorts of awesome games and see a lot of the new stuff that's coming out over the next year or so. So we're going to hop right into it. I'm going to tell you my top five favorite things from E3. And number one, we are going to start off with Guitar Hero Live. You may be thinking, why is Guitar Hero Live on this list? Isn't that game just a rehash of a rehash of a rehash? Long answer, short answer, uh, not really. So this time around, they did change up the guitar this time around. Now what, now what they did, instead of having the uh, five rows across, uh, the five buttons across, I'm sorry, now they have uh, three buttons, um, kind of like this. So you have one, two, three, and four, five, six. So there's six buttons now, which kind of gives the guitar a more natural feel uh, for an actual guitar. So um, instead of, you know, doing, you know, five things like this, you are able to kind of Almost like have pseudo chords, not really, because if you really think about it, it's pretty much only a two string guitar, but it is a step in the right direction. And you may be wondering, well, why does that make a big difference? Well, let me tell you what it does. It does change everything. Um, I am a Guitar Hero player. I've been playing the game for quite some time. I actually, let's, let me back it up. I haven't played in a while. But um, back my freshman sophomore year in college, I played a lot of Guitar Hero. Um, expert and all that kind of stuff, you know. I self-proclaimed best person in my dorm room by the way but um i did play a lot of guitar here i played on expert and it was it was really really it was a game i was good at i'm not gonna lie but um while i was waiting in line to play the game i noticed that uh the game had only had three tracks uh going down so you had you know one yeah three in the middle or just three tracks going down instead of the normal five so i was thinking i kept saying okay maybe these guys are playing you know an easy or something like that maybe that's why there's not five tracks but i noticed as i was watching more and more that there was never more than five tracks so and i i didn't really know anything about this game before coming in honestly i wasn't even expecting to see a guitar hero e at e3 let alone play a guitar hero at e e3 so once i got into the uh, into the set or whatever uh, they were explaining more about the, about the guitars so i was thinking okay this could be interesting maybe it'll light up in a more of a challenge and lo and behold, it did. I ended up playing uh, When We Were Young by The Killers, which isn't much of a difficult song. I, you know, I played it in Guitar Hero before and on Expert and didn't really have any issues with it. So um, I thought, okay, I can try it out. I can probably see how I can, um, how I can transition to this new guitar. Um, needless to say, it was pretty difficult. Um, I still passed it. I got three stars on it. Um, but at the same time, uh, a lot of the mechanics are so different and it's, it's going to be something that it's going to take a while to master and get good at again. So with that being said, that really got me excited because, I mean, I was a big fan of the Guitar Hero games. I still think they're pretty cool in general, but now it's just like they're kind of played out and it's been almost, well, almost 10 years since the original release or something like that. So I was thinking, all right, well, maybe I'll give it a shot. So, but anyway, um, long story short. I'm excited for the challenge of learning how to uh, use this new guitar because even playing it on regular, which is pretty much which, which I think would be like the medium level um, from the previous games, uh, it really did bring a lot more of a challenge to it. And that's going to be really exciting to me as someone who wants to master this game, who's already mastered the original Guitar Heroes. This is something I'm excited to try out. So, um, so yeah, so also a little bit more about this game. Um, you played in first person mode, kind of. It's 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 like a weird pseudo first person mode. So before you used to see shots of the band playing and the crowd and all that kind of stuff, but now it's like you're the actual guitarist on stage, and these are on the front of a live live audience. And I think different venues as well. So um, you'll be get, get to be able to see up close and uh, personal the reactions of the crowd and your other band members as you play well or play like crap. So. That was pretty cool. Anyway, uh, release date for this game is uh, set right now for October October 20th, 2015. Um, it's about $100 for the game and the guitar bundle, which is, is actually not bad of a price. Um, and it's going to be for every, pretty much every uh, platform except for PC. So PS360, uh, Xbox One, PS4, and Wii U. And I don't think there's Wii U support, but nobody plays with me anyway. So anyway, so that's Guitar Hero 5. Moving on to number 4, Street Fighter 5. What is up with Street Fighter V? Uh, I'm pretty terrible at Street Fighter, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I'm not very good. I also played Street Fighter V on the X or played Street Fighter IV on the Xbox, which didn't really help transitioning into playing Street Fighter V at E3. But um, nonetheless, the game looks great. It, lo it runs fine. Uh, runs great, I should say. Um, looks to be silky smooth, 60 frames per second, which is pretty important to me at least. Um, the new engine handles the game very well. Uh, the character character movements are fluid. Um, the moves are fluid, the particle effects look awesome. Um, so what I'm trying to say is Street Fighter V looks like this is going to be the next evolution 
uh, in Street Fighter. Not just, not just by name, but just with, like I said, with the new engine, with everything else going on with this game. Uh, it looks like it's going to do very, very well. Um, at E3, they had the opportunity to play on a PS4 sticks and a uh, fight stick. Uh, like I said, I'm pretty terrible at both. I, I've dabbled with the fight stick every now and then. But um, I wasn't very, feeling very confident, so I thought, okay, I can go in with the uh, PS4 controller and maybe not suck. But um, I don't think I won a single round at all this week, which is cool. It's fun. But um, yeah, whatever. The characters look awesome. Kami is looking great as usual. And you know what? They had six playable characters there. They had Birdie, Nash, Ryu, Chun-Li, Kami, and Bison. Um, I'm like I said, I'm pretty familiar with Kami and Ryu for the most part, so I kind of use both of those. But um, I could have tried if I would have had more time, I would have tried the other the other characters as well. But I don't know. I didn't really have too much time to uh, mess around with Street Fighter. So, but outside of that, the game looked great. It's fine, and um, you know what? I suck at it. But this time around, I think with Street Fighter Five, I'm going to put some time and effort to it and at least really try to get competent at the game. Um, it's obviously coming out for PS4 and PC sometime in 2016. I think it, I think I said saw somewhere in March or something. So, um, anyway. Number three. Number three is not so much a game, but a set of games. It looks like there was a return of the JRPG this year at E3 2015, which is pretty sweet because I'm a huge RPG fan and I love those turn-based JRPGs. Granted, those things are kind of extinct, but I do enjoy JRPGs in general. Um, I do like Western RPGs also, I'm not going to lie. Um, like I said, I love The Witcher 3. The Witcher 3 is awesome. Skyrim is okay. Um, in the Fallout games, it's more of a pseudo-hybrid, you know, first-person shooter, whatever that is, RPG-type game. So, I don't have anything against Western RPGs. But, um, JRPGs, J J like, Japanese strategy games, I don't know. I really, really love those games. And those were, like, some of the first games I got into, into my, I guess, adult gaming career, as opposed to playing Mario and Yoshi all the time. So, um... So yes, because so, I know Final Fantasy IX is one of my favorite RPGs, and so is Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars, two of my favorite games ever. So is Legend of Dragoon, and you know it's a whole bunch of RPGs. So I I love that genre. So it was good to see, uh, good to see it make a comeback this year. There was Kingdom Hearts three, obviously a fan favorite, fan favorite things. A lot of people looking forward to that. Um, I didn't get to see the trailer. I did see a little bit of uh, the gameplay uh, while I was working at Disney last year. We kind of did got kind of got a little sneak peek of uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 and they showed us some early early alpha footage gameplay and it looked great then and it looks even better now so that's gonna be freaking sweet I'm really looking forward to uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 and finishing the conclusion to that story um, Shin Megami Tensei Crossfire Emblem had a very very Japanese weeaboo feel to it with uh, Japanese pop idols all over the place from what I saw in the trailer however I love both series and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try it out I'm gonna give it a shot because um, I'm not, I like. I mean, I'm not a huge Fire Emblem fan. Let's say that. But Shin Megami, I like. Honestly, I like the Persona side of Shin Megami, and I know that's not the true standalone Shin Megami game that the Personas are. I know a lot of you know the purists hate hate when people say, "Oh, well, I like Persona and not Shin Megami." But regardless, I did play Double Survivor, Devil Summoner, I believe, and it's Shin Megami Tensei 4, and those are pretty fun games. Uh, so I, I enjoy that. I, I like the whole fusing of the demons and that kind of stuff, and the Persona. So I am I am excited for that game as well. Um, the Final Fantasy VII Remake, everybody's cup of tea at E3, everybody's waiting for this game for years and years and years, we never thought we'd get it, but it looks like we finally did. Um, things I'm kind of hoping for, I kind of hope they keep turn-based uh, stuff going, like I said, I know a lot of um, JRPGs and that kind of stuff, RPGs in general, are going towards a more action-oriented uh, combat system. Um, although Final Fantasy XIII did kind of turn back the clock, but they kind of butcher that combat system in my book. And not to mention the game sucked. But with Final Fantasy VII, I hope that they can uh, recapture the magic of the original on PlayStation and keep the battle system intact. I would like to see a return of a uh, dedicated turn-based RPG, at least just for once. Like I said, I know people don't play them anymore. They're not popular. They're not chic. They're not sexy. But with Final Fantasy VII, I don't want to see some type of, like, you know, butchered, bastardized version of a combat system. However, I do like the Final Fantasy X-2 combat system or Final Fantasy X in general. If they want to do something like that, I'd be okay with. But at the same time... I want to keep it pure. Keep Final Fantasy, keep Final Fantasy VII pure. That's all I'm saying. And another RPG I was really excited for was Persona 5. I, like I said, I, I do like Persona. Um, huge fan of Persona 4 and Persona 3. So naturally, Persona 5 is next on the list to play. And you can see I have my little Persona bag right here. I got an E3, so that's pretty cool. So that's really the only Persona swag. Yeah, that's the only Persona swag I have. So um, actually, I did get a Persona 4 t-shirt. I got to dance on stage and make a fool of myself in front of a bunch of people, which is cool. So, yay, t-shirts. But anyway, uh, yeah, Persona 5, uh, they didn't have much else in the way of trailers or gameplay at E3 other than what we've already seen from the uh, Atlas reveal, I guess, a couple months ago. But um, 
nonetheless, they they did have a lot of Persona 5 presence there. They had uh, the little screens up showing the trailer and that kind of stuff and the color scheme as well. So um, that was really excited. I'm really excited for that. For, for Sporola. I'm really excited for some more Persona in my life for the PS3 or PS4. I believe it's coming out sometime this winter. Although I don't know if it's going to be a worldwide release. Worldwide release. Judging for what they did based on Persona Q for the 3DS, I doubt it. So it may be a while before it reaches stateside. So I don't know. And honestly, that game is literally, literally going to be the reason I buy a PS4 at this point because Street Fighter V is coming out for PC. Kingdom Hearts 3 is also up there, and so is Final Fantasy 15, which they also didn't show. They didn't show anything in Final Fantasy 15 at all that I remembered. So whatever. Anyway, so we're going to go on to number two, which is going to be Fallout. Fallout in general, Fallout 4, and Fallout Shelter. Fallout Shelter is already available on your iOS devices right now. But we'll get into a little bit more about Fallout 4, which is the first main title for Fallout since 2008. Um, also, what I really, really liked and what I heard about, um, I remember a couple months, uh, like last month, Steam tried to put in their whole, you know, paid mod no crap in there. That nonsense, it doesn't look like it may be featured in Fallout 4, we hope. Um, so that'll be nice that we can still get our mods for free and or for donation. Um, I don't I, I am not a big fan of the paid mod system. I don't like that. But anyway, uh, that's beside the point. Another topic for another day. Uh, so yeah, so mod support uh, should be free as well as mod support on Xbox One. Unfortunately for the Sony fans, you're not getting that at least right now. But it looks like mod support's coming to the Xbox One, which is, I guess, kind of closing the gap between PC and console. But if you ask me, not really. Um, regardless. Game looks great. I like a lot of the crafting things you can do in games. So a lot of the, the Minecraft people who like to, you know, who want to express their creative side, they'll be able to do so in Fallout by creating, by recreating towns and recreating homes and shops and all that kind of stuff. And that looks really fun. And um, just, just the game in general. Um, I played Fallout 3. It's been a long time since I played it, but I did, I did for the Steam sale this past week. I actually went ahead and bought Fallout New Vegas, which was like six bucks for the collector's edition or whatever it was. So that's really awesome. And speaking of collector's editions, um, right here, you can see the Pip-Boy, uh, I guess the Pip-Boy mobile thing. That thing looks pretty sweet. And honestly, you can't get that thing anywhere right now. I think it's pretty much sold out everywhere in the entire world. So if you wanted to get one, or if you're going to wait to get one, sorry, you're SOL, you're out of luck. So you're not going to get one. Um, but that looked really cool, and I kind of wish I would have jumped on that at the time. But I, got, I don't really pre-order games. Like I said, I pre-ordered for The Witcher 3, and I pre-ordered City Skylines. I don't, I don't know. I wasn't planning on pre-ordering for Fallout 4, but I think that might have tipped the scales, especially once I saw the thing in action. At least I saw what it looked like, so. Anyway, that's not an option, but at the same time, um, I'm really excited for it. I'm really excited for Fallout. Um, I like the series. Um, so we're looking at, I think it was on, Mar on November 10th, 2015, release date for all the uh, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. You can also pre-order the game now, but I like to wait, so. Anyway, and also on the Fallout thing, they had Fallout Shelter, which is an iOS game. Um, great game, by the way. You don't need any online connectivity, so you don't need to be online. You can play the game on a plane. You can play it in the bathroom. You can get the Wi-Fi. So that's great. Also, there's no social nonsense. So you don't have to worry about having to invite friends to do things or having to friends to invite you or have to send your friends things. I hate games like that. Some of them are fine. Puzzle and Dragons, cool. Uh, One Piece Treasure Cruise, cool. I don't have to... I mean, obviously, having friends benefits you more so than, like, Candy Crush or something stupid like that. So, anyway, so there's not a lot of the social nonsense. Even the microtransactions that they do have in-game are very non-consequential. You don't need to use them. However, they will make the game a lot easier, maybe a little bit too easy. But at the same time, if that's the kind of player you are, go ahead and spend the money. You can get the full experience of the game just by downloading it on your iOS device and just playing it straight up. You don't have to deal with microtransactions. Um, funny thing about that game, actually... I had, it took me like a day to figure out exactly what was going on, but I had, I had a pretty good shelter going, I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty good, things were moving along, I had all sorts of money, I had all sorts of electricity, food, and water, um, I sent one of my guys out, one of my only guys with weapons out to go explore the wasteland, next thing I know, the second he leaves, the literal second he leaves, I get raided by raiders, and the way the game works is if you have, if there's like disasters or anything going on, you can't progress the game, so to speak, so, like, your people won't, like, make any more like water or things going on if there's like a little disaster going on and that also means anybody returning from the wasteland then won't actually return to the wasteland until that event is over so literally i'm watching these raiders go room by room beating up all my people and stealing all my stuff and there's literally nothing i can do about it so 
that was frustrating. So honestly, I think I might just have to start over because now I have no food, no electricity, no water, and it's almost it's it seems like it's it's super super hard to get it back together. A lot of my people ended up dying because I also got uh, invited by invaded by rad roaches. So pretty much my entire Vault 420 is nothing more than a memory. So anyway, check the game out. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's it's pure fun and pure gameplay. There's no social nonsense, no microtransaction nonsense. Which is good, and oddly enough, that game is grossing more than Candy Crush right now. So I'm hoping, 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 hoping that this is creating a model for um, mobile games going forward. That you don't need social Micros and Jackson nonsense to make money, make a good game, and people will spend the money on your your currency. I play League of Legends. I don't need to buy skins, but I buy skins because I like right. I like the way that they put, set up their business model. That's what Fallout is doing right now. People are purchasing purchasing. The lunchbox is based on the business model, not because they're required to, and because it's a good game. Take notes. Anyway, before I get to the number one, the number one thing, I'm just going on a little rant here. Um, a lot of the awesome indie games they had going on there, they had Untangled, um, which, honestly, if you watch the EA press conference, just the guy presenting the game alone was, was enough to have me like, oh, I need to buy this game, because he just looked so awesome up there. He, he was trembling, he was so nervous, um, sharing his lifeblood, sharing his dream of this game he's put out. And um, in front of a huge stage at the EA press conference, can you imagine doing that? I know I couldn't. And um, props to him. Um, props to the developers for putting together what looks like to be looks to be a pretty cool platformer. It looks to be really, really look great looking. You know, aesthetically, it looks awesome. So that's something I'm looking forward to. Heart Fourth Alicia. Um, another game I'm looking forward to. That was not you know featured anywhere. But uh, I remember looking at the Kickstarter about a, not about a year or so ago, and I like uh, those Metroidvania type games. That's what this is. It's a huge fantasy Metroid. Um, this is exactly the kind of style that the game is in. Um, it's pixel, not not 8 bit pixel, but uh, it's pixel art, so it looks good. Um, and everything's fluid. The combat's fluid. Um, the puzzles are pretty well well designed. They're not you know unfairly hard, but I mean at least in the demo they weren't. But um, the puzzle and yeah, the puzzles were cool. So you, obviously, if you haven't played any of these kind of games, so imagine like you have a big map, and essentially the entire map is, is accessible to you if you really want to think about it that way. But the only way to get to certain parts of the map is you know to go back you need to go on like to a different area in the map or something and get a weapon or a power up or something that will allow you to go back and complete something so yes there may be a lot of backtracking in those games but backtracking is important because you need to go and find things in order for you to progress and those games you can sink so many hours in those games are a lot of fun so i'm really excited for heart fourth alicia which is coming out for ps4 and vita i believe also pc um cuphead which had like a more of an old school disney style-esque uh, artwork I thought that when I saw that, I thought it was a cartoon. And I know it's not it's not Disney itself, but it's so Disney inspired. It looks freaking amazing. I didn't realize they had a demo of the game, so literally I was pretty much there was 20 minutes left in the conference left for the show. I was pretty upset about that. So I don't know. I think it's I think it's only Xbox. It was shown at the Xbox uh, press conference. I hope it's coming out with a PC release because I would like to play it on PC. I'm not buying an Xbox for an indie game, I'm sorry. But the game looks great itself. And Horizon Zero Dawn, which wasn't, and let's see, I think, I believe it was in the PS4 conference. I forget who the developer was. I don't know if it was an actual indie title. But that game looked pretty cool. It was, um, that was, that was the game you were kind of like the, the late, the girl with the bows. And you were, you know, you were going after the mechanical, um, you know, the dinosaurs and all that kind of stuff. So that game looked really cool. Just based on, uh, that trailer, I think that gameplay too, and it looked really freaking sweet. Also, another thing to VR, um, my first time touching VR, looking at VR, I'm convinced that VR is the future. Because VR looks sweet. First time putting on a headset, I wasn't expecting too much. Put it on, it was great. I played a Drift, which is made by 505 Games, which is having released this year on the Oculus Rift. And let me tell you what, I felt so immersed. Um, I hate that buzzword, but I felt immersed. Um, basically, you're in space, you're kind of drifting around, you don't know what's going on, and boom, you know, you, you can feel it. And there was a point where I was like, I don't know what I was doing. It was hard to control because you're drifting around everywhere. And I know I'm like, all over the place and like I, I felt myself I was like oh man I'm starting to feel a little strange here I don't know if that was the effect of the VR headset itself or of the game but I tell you what it really felt real just a little bit it felt almost like the, especially the first time I put it on and doing it it, it was a surreal experience so if you haven't had a check a chance to check out VR I definitely suggest you do so and um, if you do happen to be going to E3 next year check it out uh, unfortunately on that side note uh, with augmented reality I did not get to check out HoloLens 
I'm pretty upset about that, so I'm going to have to read up about that because I really want to see it. And that got huge rave reviews at E3, so good stuff for them. So what do you ask beats out Fallout this year for my number one? None other than Mario Maker. And yes, I'm a huge Nintendo fanboy, but that had nothing to do with my excitement for this game. I'm actually gen I'm generally excited for this game because of all the possibilities and a lot of the creativity that's going to go into this. Um, so I got a chance to play it. I got to play some of the Nintendo World Championship levels that they had featured uh, early throughout the week. That was really, really cool. Uh, and just being able to um, go through those also that I had seen before. Um, I was watching a guy in front of me playing the game also, and obviously I, I guess he kind of picked up a strategy. But um, since I had already known, like, the levels were pretty easy, but if I wouldn't have known anything, these would have been some pretty tough levels. And I'm really excited that uh, Super Mario Maker is going to bring back the challenge of the old school Mario games. Maybe, yes, yeah, still it may not be done by Nintendo, but I guarantee they're out. There are a lot of talented level creators out there that are going to put together some awesome stuff. Um, so, yeah, so playing the levels was great. Um, also, creating the levels, you, you also you get to, I mean, the name of the game, Super Mario Maker, you create your own levels. Um, that's pretty cool. You get a lot of uh, features and options to do so. You get a lot of different graphics packages. You get the Super Mario original, Super Mario Brothers, Mario Brothers 3, Super Mario World, and New Super Mario Brothers U. So you get those graphic packages. You can also choose between like the Overworld, the Underworld, and all that kind of stuff, and you know Bowser's Castle. So you get a, you, you'll get a, a large variety of different types of uh, levels you can create from, and also the music as well. And the music coincides with the levels, so you'll get the full experience of what a real Mario level should look like. So. Um, so that was pretty cool. I got a chance to make a level. I had my friend play it. He made fun of the level the whole time, but um, when he actually went to go and try to play it, he died a couple times. And that was pretty fun. And that was the, my favorite part of the game, was watching my friends fail um, at the level that I made. I thought it was really, really fun. So, uh, Mario Maker. <clears throat> so, Mario Maker, in my book, uh, stole the show for me outside of a really, really lackluster E3 for Nintendo, which was pretty disappointing. However, Mario Maker made up for it, just in the sense of how, what this game could be and what the possibilities are for it. Um, obviously, you'll be able to upload levels onto Miiverse, and you'll be able to download levels onto Miiverse. Uh, the only stipulation is you, you need to be able to beat your level, which you know should make sense, because why would you want to download some trash you can't beat? But um, that's going to be awesome. What I hope they do is they hope they implement some sort of rating system or download system so you can filter out you know a lot of the trash levels and get the best levels on top, so that way you know... Um, what, what are good levels and also you can see how yellow your, your levels stack up to those of other people so um, I'm really excited for that I'd like to see that um, also I'd like to see you be able to choose what kind of music you want for each level I know it was kind of limited at least for now it's limited um, based on what kind of level background you have um, but I don't know we'll see that's just me nitpicking and also it does come with amiibo support so uh, if you have like you know we fit trainer amiibo or a Kirby amiibo you can use that oh by the way good luck getting any amiibos you can use that amiibo on um, on your on your on your Wii U system and you can also you can use like 8-bit sprites of those so I, I, get, I know I play with the Kirby sprite um, I saw a Wii fit trainer sprite I mean it doesn't really add much gameplay mechanics but it does look pretty cool watching Kirby and Wii Fit Trainer going through your levels. So that is pretty sweet. And um, so yeah, so now my phone is going off for whatever reason. So I'm going to end this right now. So those were my favorite things from E3 that I saw this year. So tell me, what were your favorite What were your favorite things you saw at E3? Do you disagree with anything I might have said? Why am you, anything you may be wondering? Why I'm hyped up about something or anything I might have missed? Please sound off below in the comments and I'll be sure to respond. So thanks a lot guys for checking in and happy gaming. See you later. Peace.